Here's more wrestling news for July 19th, 2022. And we're starting this afternoon with Raw, as last night's festivities kicked off for the crowd in Tampa with the taping of WWE Main Event, which saw an interesting duo team together. For the show, Reggie and Akira Tozawa, who had previously feuded over the 24-7 championship, teamed together to take on Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander, as well as Alpha Academy. With the Usos having held tag gold for over a year now, WWE needs some teams to build their struggling tag division, and perhaps Reggie and Tozawa can be the next breakout team in the WWE. Over to AEW now as Andrade had been out of action for a while with an injury, which he later clarified was inflammation in his ankle, and although he's not fully healed, AEW has something big in store. On last Friday's Rampage, Private Party faced the Lucha Bros, and Andrade was at ringside to get under the skin of Penta and Phoenix. On Wrestling Observer Radio, it was explained that a feud is in the work pinning Andrade and Rouge against Penta and Phoenix for whenever the former NXT champion is wrestling again. It was added that this feud has come about because Pac will be busy defending his AEW All-Atlantic title in Europe, and this gives the two other members of the Death Triangle something to do. After a lot of teasing, this feud has been a long time in the making, and here's hope that it delivers when Andrade is able to wrestle again. Back to Raw, as Alexa Bliss is the favorite superstar of many fans, but her popularity hasn't been reflected in title wins, at least not in recent years. The last time Bliss held gold, it was the WWE Women's Tag Team titles with Nikki A.S.H., then Nikki Cross in 2020, but that all changed last night. During a six-woman tag, several 24-7 title changes took place, and for a brief moment, Bliss won the title, her first piece of gold in two years. Ironically, Bliss would pin her former tag partner Nikki to win the title, before losing the title moments later to Dewdrop, but this title win is now officially in the history books. Bliss may have a 24-7 title reign to her name, but at Money in the Bank 2022, she failed in becoming a two-time winner of the women's briefcase in a match that had its share of issues. Shotzi in particular was busted open during the match and left Twitter this month after coming under heavy criticism for her role in the latter match. Speaking to the Metro newspaper, Bliss discussed the match and said that it was a chaotic day from start to finish. Bliss added that nobody got hurt in the match despite Shotzi's injury, though it's worth bearing in mind that the tattooed superstar did not suffer any long-term problems other than getting cut. Speaking about the criticism Shotzi faced before leaving Twitter, Alexa said that no one in the match would have done anything they didn't prepare for, but ultimately, things go wrong, especially in ladder matches. Bliss said that Liv Morgan's win and subsequent SmackDown Women's title victory was long overdue, and while the match may have had its issues, the goddess of WWE is pleased with how things went down. In the early 2000s, Maria Kanellis joined WWE, and after leaving a few years later, made a name for herself in promotions like Impact, ROH, and New Japan. It wouldn't be until 2017 that Maria would return to WWE, bringing her husband Mike with her, but the couple were released in 2020. When a fan recently took to Twitter to say that Maria should return to the company, she said she'd only consider going back if there were a change in management. Maria's stance isn't exactly a surprise as she's routinely spoke out against the company during Vince McMahon's tenure as CEO. The former 24-7 champion has claimed that WWE spread false rumors around, saying she didn't disclose her pregnancy before signing a contract extension with the company when she claims she did. Vince McMahon may not be CEO at this time, but a lot of his team remain in power, and until McMahon and his lackeys are gone for good, Maria will steer clear of WWE. In February, Cesaro left WWE after a decade with the company, never having reached the world championship highs fans had hoped for him. Now Cesaro is with AEW working under the name Claudio Castagnoli, but his presence is still being felt in his former employer. At a Sunday Stunner WWE Live event in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Xavier Woods applied the signature Cesaro headlock during the New Day's match against the Usos and on Twitter made sure fans knew this was a reference to the Swiss Cyborg. Given how obscure the reference was, we can't imagine Woods getting in trouble for applying a headlock in a certain way, but it goes to show that Castagnoli meant a lot to those still working in WWE. On last Friday's SmackDown, WWE announced that Jeff Jarrett will be appearing at SummerSlam to officiate the undisputed tag team title match between the Usos and the Street Profits. Given that Jarrett isn't associated with either team and isn't exactly regarded as a tag team specialist, 
Fans were surprised by the announcement, but there is a method to WWE's decision. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Jarrett's participation at SummerSlam was discussed, and WWE is looking to bring in more local wrestling fans in the Nashville area. Nashville isn't just the home of SummerSlam, but also a city synonymous with the Jarrett family, who have been associated with the two for over 55 years. Jarrett recently returned to WWE in a backstage role, now serving as the head of the company's live event division, but WWE is hoping that Double J can still be an on-screen presence, at least for SummerSlam. With tickets in Nashville still available, we'll have to see if WWE's strategy pays off, and whether the WWE Hall of Famer is still a draw in his beloved Nashville, Tennessee. We've got some news from the XFL now, as the league is now owned by The Rock, who is looking to succeed where Vince McMahon twice failed. On Instagram this past weekend, the Brahma Bull shared a glimpse into an XFL practice session at Jackson State University in Mississippi and praised the work ethic of the hardest workers on the field. After the revived league went under in 2020 thanks in part to COVID, The Rock bought the league and has big plans for the alternative football league. The Rock has already proven to be a hit in wrestling and in Hollywood, and he's looking to make the XFL his next big runaway success. Back to wrestling, and Paul Heyman had some interesting comments when speaking to Madcap Moss and Mr. Money in the Bank Theory on last week's SmackDown. When stating that Moss should face Roman Reigns and, while trying to dissuade Theory from attempting to cash in on the Tribal Chief, Heyman said that both need to remember he is the reason they're where they're at today. On Wrestling Observer Radio, it was explained that this wasn't just a promo by Heyman, but based on reality, as it was Paul who campaigned for both men to get screen time when he was the executive director of Raw. At that time, Theory and Moss were two names who got a shine on Raw, as Heyman had handpicked them to be two of the future stars he was building. Those pushes quickly ended when Heyman was ousted from the role as Raw's executive director, but now WWE has decided to push the two again. Heyman has always been known for having a keen eye for talent, and it was interesting that some very real points made it into SmackDown last week. And we're ending today with Kevin Nash, a legend of the wrestling industry, who had some choice words about the current product this week. Speaking on the latest episode of Click This, Kevin Nash spoke about the current wrestlers, and the two-time Hall of Famer isn't impressed by what he's seeing. The thing that I found out or realized was nobody has any heat. There's nobody on the television show that I look at and say, that person, if this was real and kicked my door down, I'd be like, oh, f***. They're athletic, but they don't look like they can even throw a f***ing punch. Nash added that this is hardly a WWE exclusive issue, and that AEW also has wrestlers who go just too fast. While Nash may have at one time been WWE's lowest drawing world champion, his opinion still carries a lot of weight. And though we don't see things changing overnight, Big Daddy Cool doesn't like what he sees. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.